Hi guys, welcome to today's screencast. What we're going to be looking at is um, how the body adapts to long-term exercise. So you, you can imagine if you've done a, an eight-week, six-week training program, your body is going to have quite a few adaptations to make it improve and to, be, to, make, to make it become more efficient at actually doing its job. So we need to look at the cardiovascular adaptations, respiratory adaptations, neuromuscular adaptations, energy system adaptations and finally the skeletal adaptations. This screencast is going to be about the cardiovascular adaptations. After this screencast you're going to know absolutely everything you need to know with regards to filling in each one of those subheadings. Okay, So I suggest you get this done in lesson, you get it done at home, you get it done before next week. So we've got to respiratory um, adaptations and we can get that done. You need to talk about it with regards to, you just need to introduce the actual topic here. So you just need to suggest how if you undertake a purposeful and well-planned exercise program, your cardiovascular system, all the systems will adapt over time and you'll become fitter and more able to cope with demands of exercise. The extent of these changes will depend on the type of exercise you do, the intensity, the frequency um, of exercise undertaken and the overload achieved. So you could potentially do four 30-minute jogging sessions per week for eight weeks or a six-week resistance training program. That is how we're going to be learning it. Okay, so first of all, cardiac hypertrophy. So we're just going to use this um, PowerPoint to go through each one. Okay, so <sighs> cardiac hypertrophy, what is it? Essentially, cardiac hypertrophy is the enlargement of your heart over a long period of time. It's specifically the left ventricle wall. Okay, so the left ventricle wall will thicken. As you can see, this muscle here is stronger, it's bigger than in comparison to a normal heart. This is what we want to get to. This will increase the strength of contractions. An increase in left ventricle strength causes the heart to become more efficient, i.e. you can pump more blood out per beat, which is stroke volume, so stroke volume increases, which means you're going to be able to pump out more blood per minute, which is cardiac output, so that increases. What does this mean? This means we're going to get more blood, therefore more oxygen, to the working muscles during exercise, which means that we're going to be able to form for longer at higher intensities. Um, reducing the effect of fatigue it also means that your heart doesn't have to work as hard so it's actually it's going to turn out to be a healthy heart as well because you're not going to have to work as much because your heart is um, more efficient now this corresponds this cardiac hypertrophy means that you're also going to get an increase in stroke volume as i've just mentioned an increase in cardiac output and a decrease in resting heart rate as well and that's something else that you're going to have to discuss so increase resting and exercise stroke volume so Increased stroke volume means more blood is pumped out of the left ventricle per beat. So an increased resting stroke volume means that your heart rate is actually going to drop as well, doesn't it? Because you're going to be pumping out more blood per beat, which means your heart doesn't have to work as hard. So it's actually going to kind of have a good effect, a healthy effect on, on your heart. So <coughs> exercise stroke volume. Now exercise stroke volume also increases. Now stroke volume is dependent on venous return. We wrote about this in our last assignment, okay, which is the amount of blood going back to the heart. That's what venous return is. Now you have to think we also get um, kind of like an increase in blood volume, so we get more blood more blood in the body as well, and that's due to capillarization, which we're going to go on to. So we've got more blood, we've got more blood going back to the heart which means we're obviously going to be able to pump out more blood per beat and muscle stronger, so we're going to be able to have a greater force of contraction. So this really ties in with stroke fault and um, with Starling's law. Okay, So venous return is the amount of blood going back to the heart, and stroke volume is dependent on this. The more blood that enters the ventricle, causing them to stretch, further increasing the strength of contraction equals an increased stroke volume. So we're actually going to go through the process now on this next um, slide here. So increased venous return means that more blood um, will enter the right atrium, means that the right atrium is stretched, increasing the firing rate of the SA node. More blood forced into left ventricle, increased ventricular stretch or um, contractility, Increases force of contraction, increased stroke volume, increased cardiac output. This is Starling's law. This has a net effect of basically saying that you're going to be able to work for longer at higher intensities, delaying the, um, the effects of fatigue. If we go back to this heart, so blood comes back into the right atrium. Because there's more blood, this wall stretches. In here, you've got something called the SA node. As it stretches, the SA node. Um, increases its firing rate that means more blood is going to go into the ventricle now we say left ventricle because it's gone around the lungs it's back into here so now the left ventricle stretches even further 
which means that force of contraction is even greater, which means that more blood is going to be able to force out the aorta around the body. And that's all Starling's law is, it's his stretch and, and contractility. Don't worry about that. So decreased resting heart rate, this is another adaptation that would happen. So the result of cardiac hypertrophy and an increase in stretch volume through long-term training that you're going to have, um, suggest um, has happened, it's going to reduce the workload on your heart. So you're going to have that decreased resting heart rate. And this is really important because it just means that you're more healthy and you're fitter. So you can, some world's top athletes have a resting pulse rate between 30 and 40 beats per minute. Now, I don't mind now if you just do quickly on the, on the slide so your classmates don't see you and take the mic. Um, check your resting heart rate to see what it actually is and compare it to an elite athlete that has between 30 and 40 beats um, per minute. Resting blood pressure, you do not need to know about. Okay. Okay, capillarization of the skeletal muscle. Now, a better capillary network in the body will increase blood flow to the working muscles. This allows for more effective transport and oxygen nutrient, of oxygen and nutrients. You're going to have to listen and write a bit more about this. Capillaries is where gaseous exchange takes place. Okay, This is where oxygen swaps into the muscle for um, and carbon dioxide comes out of the muscle into the blood. And at the lungs, this is where oxygen swaps from the alveoli into the bloodstream. And then it's where card the carbon dioxide leaves the bloodstream into the alveoli and breathed out. Now capillarization means we get more capillaries, okay? So we have larger amounts of capillaries. Now we have large amounts of capillaries at the skeletal muscle and at the alveoli. This means that the body becomes more efficient at transporting oxygen and nutrients as well as um, removing carbon dioxide because we have more areas where gaseous exchange can take place. This will mean that the athlete can perform at higher intensities for longer, delaying fatigue. That is what all of this is about, okay? So that's something else that you can go on in a bit more detail about. You can use the internet and research materials to help you. Finally, blood volume, so an increased blood volume. Blood volume increases as a result of what we've just spoken about, capillarization. The more capillaries we have, we actually increase our blood volume. This means the body can deliver more oxygen to the working muscles. It means it can remove more carbon dioxide, which means the um, athlete can perform for longer at higher intensities, reducing the effects of fatigue. In addition, this increase in blood volume regulates blood body temperature more efficiently now body temperature this is important because when we start to exercise we get really hot if your body's not very good at regulating temperature you're not going to be able to perform for very long because you're too hot you're overheated and you'll stop the way we kind of um regulate our body temperature is through thermoregulation which is vasodilation and vasoconstriction so what happens is because we have more blood, because we have capillarization, um, more capillaries, what happens is when our blood vessels vasodilate, um, they become wider, so their diameter increases. They go to the surface of the skin a bit easier, and the heat from the blood can actually radiate off the skin. And then we also sweat, and this can evaporate as well um, from our body. So we actually we're able to cool ourselves down a lot more effectively and efficiently so that's really important when it comes to blood volume as well so guys that's all you need to know with regards to today's lesson if you get all that information down onto the template that i showed you at the start and um, we'll crack on with the respiratory system next week thank you bye